And next up we have Monica, who's going to do some poetry. I'm a poetry. Um, I just have two poems, but they're um, responses to a series from William Carlos Williams, so they go together. Don't applause until the second one. Thanks. <laughs> Landscape with the Fall of Icarus. When Icarus fell, the farmer plowed the field. The herder and his dog watched over the sheep. Six sailboats or more came into the harbor or out. The town in the distance woke golden, the sun glinting, warming and melting the wax from the wings of all but the birds whose wings were true and alive. And one man watched on the bank as Icarus drowned. The Hunters in the Snow. Below in the distance, skaters form a picture of winter fun. Though night is nearly full on and snow covers the ground, it must be cold, for even the dogs are hunched, and the inworkers nurse a fire blazing and blowing in the wind. Four crows in the foreground perch, and one flies toward the village, where it seems far below, even old women skate. The bushes are dead, water frozen, and fires burn wildly. And next up is me, yeah. Shame. Uh, all my poems are going to be by uh, Charles Bukowski from his uh, book Pleasures of the Damned. Um, everybody give Charles Bukowski a round of applause. Bukowski! Right. First one is uh, Harbor Freeway South. The dead dogs of nowhere bark as you approach another traffic accident. Three cars, one standing on its grill, the other two laying on their sides, wheels turning slowly. Three of them at rest, strange angles in the dark. It has just happened. I can see the still bodies inside. These cars scattered like toys against the freeway center divider. Like spacecraft, they have landed there. As you drive past, there's no ambulance yet, no police cars. The rain began 15 minutes ago. Things occur. Volcanoes are 15 time, 1,500 times more powerful than the first A-bomb. The dead dogs of nowhere, those dogs keep barking. Those cars, they're like that, obscene, a dirty trick. It's like somebody dying of a heart attack in a crowded elevator, everybody watching. I finally reach my street, pull into the driveway, park, get out. She meets me halfway to the door. I don't know what to do, she says. The stove went out. This one's a bit lighter. It's called A Threat to My Immortality. She undressed in front of me, keeping her pussy to the front while I lay in bed with a bottle of beer. Where'd you get that wart on your ass, I asked. That's no wart, she said. That's a mole, a kind of birthmark. That thing scares me, I said. Let's call it off. I got out of bed and walked into the other room and sat in the rocker and rocked. She walked out. Now listen, you. You old fart. You've got warts and scars and all kinds of things all over you. I do believe you're the ugliest old man I have ever seen. Forget that, I said. Tell me some more about that mole on your butt. She walked into the other room, got dressed, and then ran past me, slammed the door, and was gone. And to think, she'd brought all my books of poetry, too. I just hoped she wouldn't tell anybody that I wasn't pretty. Uh, this one's called The Crunch. Too much, too little. Too thin, too fat, or nobody. Laughter or tears, haters, lovers, strangers with faces like the back of thumbtacks, armies running through streets of blood, waving wine bottles, bayonetting and fucking virgins. 
or an old guy in a cheap room with a photograph of Marilyn Monroe. There is a loneliness in this world so great that you can see it in the slow movement of the hands on the clock. People so tired, mutilated, either by love or no love. People just are not good to each other, one on one. The rich are not good to the rich. The poor are not good to the poor. We are afraid. Our, education, our educational system tells us that we can all be big ass winners. It hasn't told us about the gutters or the suicides or the terror of one person aching in one place alone. Untouched, unspoken to, watering a plant. People are not good to each other. People are not good to each other. People are not good to each other. I suppose they never will be. I don't ask them to be. But sometimes I think about it. The beads will swing, the clouds will cloud, and the killer will behead the child like taking a bite out of an ice cream cone. Too much, too little, too fat, too thin, or nobody. More haters than lovers. People are not good to each other. Perhaps if they were, our deaths would not be so sad. Meanwhile, I look at young girls' stems, flowers of chance. There must be a way. Surely there must be a way we have not yet thought of. Who will push this brain inside of me? It cries, it demands. It says there is a chance. It will not say no. And the last one I'm going to read is called The Genius. This man some kind sorry, sorry. This man sometimes forgets who he is. Sometimes he thinks he's the Pope. Other times he thinks he's, he thinks he's a hunted rabbit who hides underneath the bed. Then, all at once, he'll recapture total clarity and begin creating works of art. Then he'll be all right for some time. Then, say, he'll be sitting with his wife and three or four of the people discussing various matters. He will be charming, incisive, original. Then he'll do something strange. Like once, he stood up, unzipped, it, unzipped, and began pissing on the rug. Another time, he ate a paper napkin. And there was this time he got into his car and drove it backwards all the way to the grocery store and back, again backwards. The other motor screaming at him, but he made it there and back without incident and without being stopped by a patrol car. But he's best as the Pope, and his Latin is very good. His works of art aren't that exceptional, but they allow him to survive and to live with a series of 19-year-old wives who cut his hair, his toenails, bib, tuck and feed him. He wears everybody out but himself. Thank you.